Greetings, dear friends, fellow programmers, and those aspiring to be. I have a question for you. Did you know that transactions in ASP.NET Core and Entity Framework can be a game changer for your database communication? If you would like to find out why, I highly recommend you to stick around and watch this video. Today, we are diving into the world of mastering transactions in Entity Framework Core and ASP.NET Core 8. It is a crucial skill for every developer striving towards becoming a great developer. So, we will be discussing how to use transactions using Entity Framework Core, what are their benefits, and even some potential issues you may encounter while using them. So, Let's get started. First, let us talk about what transactions are, because that's the logical point to start from. A transaction is a set of operations you would like to execute against your database as a single logical unit. If any of the operations fail along the way, the entire action is going to be rolled back that way ensuring data integrity in our database. Now, this terminology might be a bit more advanced, so for those of you people who are just getting started with Entity Framework Core and databases in general, let me try to explain this concept in English. So, a transaction you can observe as a set of things that we want to perform on our database. So we want to perform five actions, let's say. We want to create something, we want to update something and save those changes, do a lot of things. But we want to do all of those things as a single query executed against the database. And also we want to make sure that if any of those five actions fails along the way, that our database is not going to be updated for just the first half of those five actions, but it can be updated either completely when all five actions were completed successfully, or it is not going to be updated at all, which is basically the meaning of the word roll back the database, which is going to bring the database back into the state before we started executing any actions on it. You can think of transactions as a shopping cart when you go to a marketplace. And when you go to the checkout, you have put in into your cart quite a few things, but if the entirety of the cart gets cancelled and nothing gets paid for or taken home. So transactions are very similar to that concept. I hope now it makes a bit more sense. And now the moment you've been waiting for. A moment has finally arrived for us to actually implement a transaction in our application. So why not jump into our Visual Studio and start doing some coding? So what we are going to do here is we are going to discuss this method right here. So basically what we are doing, we are first creating a new transaction. This is done by utilizing our DB context database and its method called begin transaction async, which is, as its name suggests, begin the transaction. Then we have a try catch statement where within a try catch, we want to execute all the actions we want to perform. In our case, we want to create a new order and save it into the database, which is going to be performed by invoking these two methods. So when that is done, we want to execute another action, which is going to be to save an order item connected to the order we just created, because we cannot create an order item before we have created the order, because order item contains order ID, and we do not have order ID before the order was created in the database. So we have to first create the order and then create the order item. So that is exactly what we are going to do. And if in this process of executing these two queries, which are going to be insert actions for our database, if anything fails along the way, we will end up in the catch statement where we will execute rollback async method for our transaction 
which is going to do, as we discussed in theory, it is going to roll back all the changes that were performed on our database. And if, for example, we created the order successfully, but the process of creating order item has failed, the process of creating order will be rolled back and no new orders will be added to the database. So the database state will be the same as it was before we started executing the whole idea of creating a new order and order item. So I hope you have an idea what rolling back is. But if everything goes well and we have managed to successfully execute these two actions, then we are going to commit the transaction to the database, which is actually going to save the changes and everything is going to be present in the database. So new changes will be introduced after all. And now let us run the code and see what happens. As we can see here, we're experiencing some issues. As you can see, we do not have a begin transaction statement for our SQL that was generated. And we do have a message explaining that multiple active result sets is enabled. And if we want to be able to use transactions, we have to disable this feature. So to do that, we need to go to our connection string for the database and there we will see the following. Here it is, multiple active result sets is set to true. And in order to be able to create transactions, we want to set false here. And now when we execute the application, everything should be working as expected. But I want you to be very careful and not set the Mars to false unless you are certain that it is okay to do that. So I want you to spend some time investigating in your concrete project whether it's a good idea to do that or not before you actually make a decision and set it to false or true. Now, after we have covered this, what are the actual benefits of using transactions? Well, the first and foremost, we are going to gain data integrity because we're going to have a scenario whether where everything works as expected and all the actions were performed successfully and we will be certain of it or we will have a scenario where the database is not changed at all and no actions were performed in general. So we will have data integrity for sure. Then we have consistency because the database is going to be kept in the consistent state, it will not be updated partially and then contain basically wrong data or data that is not complete or that cannot be used properly. And finally, we have error handling, which is going to be basically very simple because we will have the power to just roll back the changes if anything goes wrong at all. And that's it. Those are the main benefits of using transactions. And now I want to cover another very specific case because in certain situations, you might have a few transactions that are being executed as a part of another transaction. So let me give you an example so you would have a better image about what I'm saying. So we have a process multiple operations async method right here. We're getting started with already familiar step which is to create a transaction. And then we're executing two methods. Then if they were executed successfully, we commit the changes. If something fails, on the other hand, we're going to roll back the changes. But this seems like a fairly simple and similar situation as the one we covered in the first example. But what makes it different is the fact that we're going to imagine that both first and second operation contain another transaction inside of them. So each of these two transactions can contain a set of actions that are going to be performed as a single unit. And then you have those two units that need to be executed as a single big unit in the process multiple operations async method. This right here is going to ensure that all of the transactions and all the actions included in those transactions must succeed in order for any updates to take place in our database. If, for example, 
our first operation goes well and everything is okay and the changes should be committed to the database but then the second operation fails nothing is going to be changed in the database because we will end up in this exception handling block and everything will be rolled back those are some amazing things right in conclusion mastering transactions in sp.net core 8 and entity framework core is an absolute must if you want to be a really solid database developer and be able to have very good control and ensure data consistency in all of your applications so if you enjoyed this video and found it useful i would like to kindly invite you to subscribe to the channel because I'm really doing my best to provide you with as many useful series and topics and explanations as I possibly can. And I try to do those based on my previous experience and the things I would like to be able to find before I started filming this. So until the next video, thank you for watching and happy coding!